it's a it's a pleasure to be here today and uh, want to say hello and, and welcome to all of our panelists. If you guys could uh, go ahead and turn your, your cameras and microphones on. Um, as Abigail mentioned, we're going to discuss uh, the, the challenges and uh, processes of bringing new technologies into the construction workflow. Um, I'm Mark Driscoll. I'm the Senior Director of Enterprise Sales for AMC Bridge, a firm that develops custom software solutions and integrations for companies in construction, architecture, and manufacturing. With me today are Jim Quancy, Director of ADM Partnerships at Autodesk, Phil Epifano from uh, Open Space, he's Enterprise Account Executive there, Joseph Kaur, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Robotic Eyes out of Munich, Rick Dunlap, the Vice President of Technical Services at Brand Safeway, and Mike Cox, the BIM strategist for Allegiant. So the concept of building information modeling or BIM has been around for many, many years, more than we all care to count, right? But around the globe, we've seen varying degrees of success in BIM adoption. Um, and in many cases, we've seen a delay in companies realizing the full potential ROI that BIM can provide. Part of the challenge in realizing that ROI may be related to the huge number of available technologies and, and technology choices and the challenges of integrating those um, and leveraging that technology in the workflow. Over the past several years, we've just seen a massive explosion in the types of technologies, whether it's hardware or software that's available to the construction uh, marketplace today. And the process of integrating those technology solutions into those workflows only increases the, the complexity and the challenges of, of allowing our customers, our clients to become successful in using those new technologies. So today we're going to discuss those challenges, some best practices for successfully implementing new technologies, and some of the pitfalls to look out for as, as, uh, as we do approach those, those topics. Um, we'll start the discussion with a few questions. And even though I'll direct the questions to certain individuals, um, I invite you all to share your thoughts whenever you have something you'd like to add to the discussion. I'd like to keep this a fairly informal uh, sharing of ideas and insights. This is a pretty dynamic and, and uh, uh, expert panel. And so I, I know that we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas and insights to share with our, with our listeners today. Um, at the end of the, the uh, discussion, and if time permits, we'll open up the, um, the floor to Q&A from, uh, from our audience. So with that said, Rick, I'd like to start with you. Uh, Brand Safeway recently made the decision to develop an augmented reality application for use by your internal customers. What was the motivation behind that choice? And what were some of the critical challenges you had to overcome throughout that, that decision and implementation process? Yeah, sure. So, so sort of as you described, Mark, I think I think we've been on a journey for about seven or eight years now, really understanding what 3D space is and how it can help us. I think I think one of the one of the things that we've learned uh, over the last six or seven eight years is that everyone's capable of identifying a really good idea, and everyone's capable of dedicating company resources to go and do this one-off idea. Um, so I'm going to kind of answer your question backwards, right? So what we've been focused on the last couple of years is really trying to bring together our 3D strategy, and so. So BIM is part of that discussion, right? So how can I talk in 3D if I'm not talking in a common language inside of 3D, quite honestly? Um, that's That's been one of our biggest uh, hurdles, right? Is how do I get the functional teams, whether it's field operations teams to be able to interact with 3D models? How do I get our engineering teams to actually create and uh, deliver families of items and products in 3D so that I can then replicate that? Because from my perspective, growing up in the field side of the business, quite honestly, the operational side, with a heavy, heavy emphasis in, say, project management, project control, is how do I enable our field teams to be more effective? So what, what I would tell you is it can be death by a thousand cuts with all the potential technologies that are out there. And what we want to do is kind of let everyone get their feel of adoption, everyone 
get bought into we're going to go from flat pieces of paper to virtual environments and you can't you can't do that top down you can only do that through building consensus right so once we've done that um the natural place for us to use 3d quite honestly is we're a 30,000 person field operation um there's a lot of field activity that happens and if you watch the communication processes that are going on out there in the field it's sometimes it's on cell phones sometimes it's on field radios sometimes it's on pieces of paper and very complex you know <clears throat> tasks are being asked to be performed so how can i make the biggest impact well biggest impact is have a nice 3d library of objects that's common across all the functions in our business uh, have a couple of forums to be able to share those 3D objects and, and convey plans, uh, safety process, quality process, engineering requirements, all those things. But the ARVR really, um, the app that we're, that you, that you mentioned really helps us in a, in three key ways. I, I see it as our field teams can actually validate designs or uh, a, ver a variety of solutions in the as-built space right there at the at, you know at the scene of the task or the work phase the other thing is 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 we can help convey uh some of the information our engineering team so we have a broad engineering team r d engineering application engineering product engineering how do i bring all those people together and show them in a consistent concise way that application helps us do that and then and then lastly, sort of where most of us started this journey, I would, I would say is the neat factor of technology, uh, clients, uh, our teams internally, externally, they all like technology. They all know that's where it needs to go. They're not exactly sure as to why. So we can help share solutions. We can help engage customers, drive their experience and do a lot of those things. So it's really a three for one, but what really pays for it is making our field teams more efficient. I think that's a, that brings up a great point too, Rick, of uh, the why factor. And I think that really boils down to proper education just for all levels of technology being implemented through uh, construction. Because um, I think that's where sometimes the reluctance uh, kind of starts is what am I implementing? Why am I doing this? Um, so proper education, understanding, from the client perspective, what am I trying to solve for? And what issues, problems can I start to streamline with the use of technology? So I think that's like, we'll obviously get, I think, deeper into that conversation. But yeah, I think that why factor is uh, mm -hmm. very large and it's unique to each organization that you come across as well. So, Not one size so fits all. Yeah, so to, to tag on, right, to kind of give you a, a real world example, right? So. I had I had a small engineering team that reported to me and it was always let's get 3D, let's get the BIM thing going. No, it takes too long. I can't learn how to do it. It's harder, it's scary, it's the monster under the bed kind of thing. Now over the last six months, you've seen a couple hundred, a couple of hundred engineers actually start that conversion. And what we're finding is there's a huge amount of synergy and excitement. And actually, they're starting to recognize that when we get to that environment, it's actually more efficient. They can do more solutions. They can provide multiple uh, alternatives in the same amount of time. Uh, it's really nice that the workflow starts to get integrated that way. It's, it's kind of a, a sales 101 concept. If, if the users or, or buyers understand why they need that and what the benefits are, it becomes a lot easier for them to, to adopt that. Yeah, yeah so yeah so from a personal perspective right i'll share that these are five six eight ten year visions of mine and now people are starting to embrace them <laughs> and suddenly there's a huge stakeholder or you know group of stakeholders that are now taking that and taking it to levels i never dreamed of right and it's kind of happy on one hand but i'm kind of like wow I, They've taken it, you know, they've taken the baby and now they're, they've moved on, right? So it's, it's exciting, but that's the only way organizations can actually prosper and continue to grow. So, yeah. Rick, you, you bring up an interesting, an interesting point. You know, there's, we look at this panel, there's, there's um, with, with, without uh, being offensive to anyone, there's a couple of dozen years of experience here. And, yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, we, we've, um, we've, all experienced this this push right from our early early days with 
with 2D applications and, and moving from drafting to, to the computer, which seems like a lifetime ago. And certainly with the advent of, of 3D models, you know, companies have just really driven in that direction. Do you still see a lot of the the reticence of, of moving from 2D to 3D at this stage in the game? If that's for me, uh, the answer is yes, there's still pockets. Um, but we're starting at the foundational elements of those people, right? So we're making sure that that executive leadership understands the value in it. They're not uh, they're not pushing people away from it. Um, the other thing that that I would tell you is, in the past, if the client wasn't necessarily asking for it, then why are we doing it? Um, well, it's differentiation, it's it's internal efficiency, it's all those things. So now we're actually seeing clients and industry pulling. So it's we're really hitting that from both angles. But we do have, um, you know, elements of people who've always done it this way for 30 years, and this is the way they're going to do it until they don't do it anymore. But uh, we'll that's bring okay. them along kicking and screaming. Yeah, but but uh, you know that's okay too. Um, but there will be a trend, you know, there will be a conversion over time, right? I mean, a natural evolution of that stuff, right? So they're still valuable people and they have very good experiential knowledge and solutions that they've that they've had in their trapped in their brain for you know 30 years. So how do we get that out and help them teach some of the new generation or some of the 3D generation how to how to put that that's, in a model? That's certainly one of the important elements of, of what we've noticed as a, as a company over the past several years, that, that that unlocking of that domain expertise, that domain knowledge is really a, an important and valuable element as, as we move forward with technology adoption.